Hi, this is Bob, and welcome back to the final part of this three-part tutorial on keyframes in Baselight. In this final part, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic grade using keyframes. And again, I'm going to use another project for this. In this sequence, we've got a lot of shots which were filmed in a nightclub. The lighting varies quite a bit, but most of it's pretty well exposed and looks OK. However, there's a shot here which starts off very dark, but as this couple moves around the corner, the lighting changes significantly, so the exposure's fine at the end of the shot. If I apply a fixed grade to increase the gain and the brightness at the beginning of the shot, it'll be too bright at the end. So I need to create a dynamic effect which changes the grade throughout the shot. I'll start off by adding a keyframe where the image starts to brighten up. It's around about here, I think. Now from here to here, the change is mostly down at the black end, so I'll use the lift control to compensate. Over the next part of the shot, both the black and the white levels continue to change, so I'll adjust these again to compensate. Each time I make a change to any of the grading controls, a keyframe is automatically added. This is because we're in auto keyframe mode. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Also notice that each time I add a keyframe, all these other keyframe buttons turn blue. This is because the Stripe Keyframes button is enabled. In Stripe Keyframe mode, a keyframe is automatically added to all the parameters in the current operator, even though you're only adjusting one of them. We can turn off Stripe mode if we want to, but when changing a grade like this, you generally want to capture all the settings for the grade at this current point in time. Keyframing individual controls is more fiddly and can lead to unexpected results if maybe one of the parameters is changing at different points to the others. However, if you do want to work that way, you can turn off Stripe mode and then select which keyframes you want to see using the keyframe filter button here. Another thing about Stripe keyframe mode is that although a new keyframe is added to all the parameters at the same time, if you change the interpolation mode of one of the parameters, it won't change for any of the others. If you do want to change the interpolation mode for all the parameters, you can hold down the shift key while you click on the interpolation mode button. Now you can see that the menu changes to say all. Selecting all constant is also a quick way to remove all the keyframes from every parameter on the current operator. In other words, it would change this grade back from a dynamic grade into just a fixed static grade. OK, well I've added a few keyframes, so let's see how that looks when we play it back. Well, it looks much better than before, but as we've increased the gain so much, you can now see some noise appearing in the dark areas here. So I'll add a simple mask using an edge, and then push this area back down again to hide the noise. OK, now I also need to animate the edge a bit, so I'll enable keyframing for the shape motion and adjust it as we play back. Well that's looking pretty good now, but right at the end here you'll see that the girl's shoulder gets so bright that it clips the whites. I could simply push the gain back down again, but if I do that I'll end up adding another keyframe at this point, and I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to adjust the gain on the previous keyframe such that it doesn't clip at the end here. Well I can do that by clicking on the Auto Edit button and changing it to Edit Left instead. In this mode, when I make an adjustment, it will modify the previous keyframe rather than adding a new one at this frame. But the great thing is that I can sit on this frame and view this frame while I'm adjusting the keyframe before, if you see what I mean. The same would apply to edit right mode if we want to adjust keyframes which are coming up next. You can use the comma and full stop buttons on the keyboard to toggle between auto and left right keyframe edit modes. Left and right edit modes are also useful when adjusting shape keyframes. Sometimes you need to line up a shape with a specific object on the screen, but at the point in time where you need to place the keyframe, 
the object itself may be obscured. You can therefore add the keyframe at that point in time and then scrub along the timeline until you can see the object. You can then reposition the shape at that point in the timeline but using edit left or edit right mode and the keyframe you added earlier will be adjusted rather than adding a new keyframe where you are in the timeline. Sounds a bit confusing so it's probably best to have a play with this to figure out how it works. OK, well I've covered a fair amount of the keyframe functions within Baselight, but before I finish, there's a couple of other things I want to show you. I'll use this example to illustrate them. Let's say that the grade changes I've added to this shot are OK, but that the first keyframe is actually a little bit late, and I want the change to start happening a bit earlier. Well, I can do that by shifting the keyframes along the keyframe bar. First, I need to select the keyframe to be moved. I do this by right-clicking on the keyframe and choosing Add to Move Selection. I can also add other keyframes to this selection, or add them all if I need to. I can then nudge the selected keyframes left or right by holding down the Command key and pressing the left or right square bracket. This allows me to move the point where the change starts to happen to exactly the right frame. I can then exit the Move mode by right-clicking and selecting Reset All Move Selections. The other options you may have noticed on the right-click keyframe menu are Delete All Left of Cursor and Delete All Right of Cursor. As their names imply, these functions will delete all the keyframes to the left or right of the current frame. Unless this button is set to Show All, this will only affect the keyframes for the selected parameter. But this can be a much quicker way to remove unwanted keyframes than jumping to each one and then clicking on the keyframe button to toggle them off. Notice that if you do this between existing keyframes, a new keyframe is added at the current cursor position, reflecting the current parameter values. If it didn't do this, the current values would probably change, which would affect what you're currently seeing, and you'd have to go back and readjust everything. OK, so this has been a fairly in-depth look at keyframing and tracking within Baselight, but I hope I've shown you how you can use Baselight to do virtually everything you need to, to adjust both the look and also the framing of your shots. As with all these features, the best way to learn is to go away and try them out for yourself. In the next tutorial, I'll look at some of the other operator types and go through some more advanced grading techniques. Thanks for watching.